CBS next Wednesday. You're watching coverage you can count on. This is News Channel 15's Nightcast. We start with some breaking news in Fort Wayne tonight. Good evening, I'm Alyssa Ivinson. Mark and Heather are off. I will be field anchoring Nightcast tonight from Hobson Road. That is where a bank robbery investigation is going on right now. Let's get the latest information on this investigation. For that, we turn to Officer John Chambers with the Fort Wayne Police Department. Thanks for joining us tonight. So tell us what happened here this evening. Sure. Approximately 925 this evening, uh, Fort Wayne Police Department responded to the Pinnacle Credit Union located in the 3400 block of Hobson Road in reference to a bank robbery. The information we have at this time is that an employee, um, as they arrived home, they were met by uh, two suspects armed with handguns who forced them inside the, the uh, residence. Um, as at approximately 9 o'clock this evening, uh, two suspects took the employee and a relative uh, back here to the bank. Um, one of the suspects stayed in the car with the relative while the other suspect entered the bank with the employee. Uh, suspect left with an undisclosed amount of money. Um, we don't know exactly if he left on foot or, or if he had another vehicle waiting. And the bank employee and the car was left here at the bank, right? That is correct. Okay, so what does the public need to know tonight about a bank robber on the loose and how they can help in this investigation? What we'd ask is anybody that possibly observed anything suspicious or out of the ordinary to please contact our Fort Wayne Police Detective Bureau. Okay, thank you very much for that update tonight, Officer John Chambers. Again, a bank robbery investigation going on right now at the Pinnacle Credit Union on Hobson Road. We'll, of course, keep you updated on this story as it develops throughout the newscast. Now, in other news today, another shooting in Fort Wayne has left a man dead. Police Chief Rusty York thinks this shooting is gang-related. It happened on Hughes Street shortly before 1 o'clock. Police say two men in their 20s gunned down a 17-year-old in the backyard, shot him several times, and then ran off. When officers got there, he was still alive but died before medics arrived. Now, we talked with a man who says he saw the whole thing happen, and he called police. If you see somebody shoot somebody down, pick up the dog on phone and call the police. I don't give a damn. Call the police. You ain't got no reason to be scared. Scared of what? Police were able to get a good description of what the two men looked like. Police Chief Rusty York again says officers are familiar with the gunmen and they're confident that they will find the people responsible soon. Now this marks the sixth shooting in Fort Wayne and Allen County in the last five days. The number of homicides in Fort Wayne so far this year is already in double digits. But how does that compare to other areas of the state? Tonight we crunch those numbers and we go back to the studio with Lamar Hall holiday for that story. Okay, thank you very much, Lamar. Last week's news conference in Mercer County, Ohio, has led to several more tips on the Gruby double homicide investigation. In 2011, police found Robert and Colleen Gruby dead inside their Fort Recovery home. Somebody had tied up the father and daughter and shot them to death. Last week, Sheriff Jeff Gray said police had arrested Trevin Sanders and Brant Rhodes, but still had many unanswered questions. Since that news conference, Sheriff Gray says citizens have given police 14 more tips and investigators are now following up on those. Leaders with both Parkview and DuPont hospitals are alerting employees tonight. They say a man is impersonating a police officer and trying to stop women. The alert says there have been at least four incidents where women are either followed or stopped by this vehicle, which looks like an unmarked police car. These are said to have happened on I-469 or around DuPont Road. A man with short brown hair and hazel eyes is said to be driving the vehicle and targeting women alone in their cars around the hospital. This afternoon, our cameras spotted an Indiana State Trooper at Parkview Regional Medical Center. Police say a woman and a car had a car shine a spotlight on her early this morning, but we don't know a lot of other details about what happened. Indiana State Police say this is the first official police report they've received on the impersonator. Now, police are keeping an eye out for the vehicle in question. For more on what you should do if you are pulled over and you're not sure if it is an actual police car or not, just go to this story on Wayne.com. Two men are behind bars accused of robbing a New Haven bank nearly two years ago. Last night, Matthew Van Schoik and Michael Burr were arrested at their Fort Wayne homes. 
Police say the pair robbed the PNC Bank on Lincoln Highway West in October 2011. Both men face federal robbery charges. Well, it's the buzz of the sports world right now. Rutgers fired its head coach after a video of him berating and physically and verbally assaulting his players went viral. Tonight, News Channel 15's Aaron Rodgers spoke with a local coach about how this could affect the sport. We go back to the studio for her story. Aaron? Okay, thank you very much tonight, Aaron Rodgers. Construction season is now underway in Union Chapel Road. We'll see some construction starting tomorrow. Workers will begin building a roundabout where the road intersects with Diebold Road. It's less than half a mile east of the I-69 interchange where construction is already going on. One more ramp still has to be built. The other ramps opened at the end of last year and drivers are getting used to the new kind of interchange. I think this is, which is always a mess. Work on the roundabout at Union Chapel and Diebold Roads is expected to take about three months. The I-69 interchange is expected to be completed by the end of summer. Well, last week we were dealing with freezing temperatures. Now it feels a lot more like spring, although, Jonathan, I'll tell you, it's still <laughs> a little bit cold out here. I wasn't quite ready to get rid of my full coat just yet. Yeah, I'm watching your uh, live reporting or your live anchoring. I'm kind of glad I'm in here in the in the warm studio under the lights. Don't need a coat at all. And it is a little chilly out there. Alyssa's is out in the temps. And it's Okay, thank you very much, Jonathan. Well, do you have a dead ash tree on your property? Now a new program can help you get rid of it. The city says there are actually so many dead ash trees around the city that it would take crews years to cut them all down. But if you don't want to wait, just hire a bonded and insured contractor, and the Parks Department will help reimburse you for part of that cost. You can find more information on how to do that on the local page of Wayne.com. Well, dig out that old tackle box because this year you'll be able to do some fishing in the fort. The DNR's Go Fishing in the City program will stock several ponds and lakes with thousands of channel catfish this spring and summer. One of those ponds will be the Shove Park Pond. Crews are expected to release the first batch of fish sometime later this month. Now, you don't have to have a fishing license to take part, but all other state fishing rules do apply. Again, we are on the scene live tonight off of Hobson Road where police are actively investigating a bank robbery that happened here earlier tonight. We will have more coverage you can count on coming up next. Coverage you can count on continues. This is News Channel 15's Nightcast. We're taking you back out to a live look of the breaking news happening right now in Fort Wayne. This is the Pinnacle Credit Union off of Hobson Road. Police, as you can see, still on the scene right now investigating an armed robbery. Here's what police say has happened so far around 915 tonight is when the bank robbery happened. But it really all started much earlier in the evening when an employee arrived home at his or her apartment, a man armed with a handgun forced that person inside the apartment and bound them. They were waiting for a while at that apartment. The employee had a relative actually show up. That person was also bound. And at some point, another suspect showed up at that apartment. Then they got into a car and came back here to the credit union here on Hobson and robbed the bank. The suspect left. Uh, the employee, the employee's vehicle that they used to get here to the bank left here. So police aren't sure right now um, how the suspects got away, if they ran off or if there was another vehicle waiting for them. They are still looking for a suspect description. There was some money taken. We don't know how much, but again, police are asking you if you saw anything suspicious in this area tonight, uh, do give them a call and they're looking for any direction and help in finding those suspects. Of course, interviewing the victims in this bank robbery as well. We will be updating this story uh, on Wayne.com as we get more information and of course tomorrow morning on First News. But again, a bank robbery investigation going on right now out here live at Hobson and that's where we're bringing you Nightcast tonight from the live location. But now let's send it back into the studio. Jonathan, a warm up is on the way, right? Uh, much warmer weather in the next couple. Alyssa, there's actually a chance of a few showers and thunderstorms. Oh, right. Well, it's coming eventually, right? OK. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And in case you missed it at the top of the show, I am out live here at a, a bank robbery investigation. But check this out. A 40 story skyscraper in Russia is destroyed after a massive fire this afternoon. In this video, you can see the building nearly engulfed in flames. More than 100 firefighters were brought in to fight the fire, which could smolder for days. The building was evacuated, but it's still not known if anyone was hurt. Now, the cause of the fire is still under investigation. 
or forget Eminem, Jay-Z, or 50 Cent, this granny has some rapping skills. Meet Verna Owen. Today, she turned 100 years old and celebrated by dropping some sweet lyrics. Let's take a listen. So long with the show, do it nice and neat. Today is the day we must all compete. That is, knock them cold. <laughs> Bring home the gold. As you all know, there's rapping in my soul. What a great spirit. Besides rapping, Owen enjoys bowling and even won a couple of medals in 2011 at the National Senior Games. Send it back into the studio now with Glenn in sports. And Glenn, I want to see some rapping sports reporting. I'm not going to do that. My grandma, though, is 91. She loves some Jay-Z. So uh, if she was here, we'd have a rap for that. Welcome back. We are bringing Nightcast to you live tonight where police are actively investigating a bank robbery here at the Pinnacle Credit Union on Hobson Road. Police say an employee arrived home earlier this evening, was bound in, the, in uh, that person's apartment by a man armed with a handgun. A couple hours later, that suspect brought the employee back here to the bank where they robbed the bank. Police are asking for any witness help in finding the suspects and who might have uh, committed this crime tonight. Again, police now actively investigating a bank robbery, and we will uh, continue to update this story throughout the night on Wayne.com and, of course, tomorrow morning on First News starting at 5 o'clock for the latest on this story and all other stories overnight. Have a good night.